Hey, what's up everybody? This is Tammy. Welcome back to our video tutorial series on beginning Sprite Kit. In this part of the series, you'll learn about scenes and how to work with scene transitions. In Sprite Kit, you don't have to place everything within the same scene. Instead, you can create multiple unique scenes, one for each screen, much like you do with view controllers in iOS development. You've already been working with scenes throughout this series. Now, you'll just be jumping in a little deeper. Scenes are created using the SK Scene class. As expected, SK Scene, like other objects, has methods and properties. One of the methods is the update method. You learned about that in a previous video. When moving between scenes, you can create an SK transition object to perform an animated transition from one scene to the next. There are a variety of animations from which to choose. Because we don't have time to cover all of them in this series, I encourage you to check Apple's documentation to discover the different animations possible. With that said, let's get over to Xcode and get our new scenes added. In the interest of time, I created a GameOverScene.swift file that you can find in this video tutorial's resources folder. Locate that file and drag it into the project. Let's take a look at this file together. You'll notice that it is a subclass of SKScene. You'll also notice that on line 27, we're creating a constant named 1. That constant is getting set in the init method right here on line 30, depending on what value you pass in when you're creating the game over scene. Scroll down a little bit further and take a look at did move to view. Now you can see here on line 40 that you're creating a sprite node. You're then setting that sprite node based on the value of 1 to either you win or you lose. Both of these are images. You're then creating an action to wait a duration and play a sound, again, based on whether or not the value is true or false. Then further on down, beginning on line 57, you're setting the position of that sprite node, and then down here on line 59, you're adding it to the scene. Finally, on line 62, you're creating another action. On line 63, you're creating a run block action, and inside that run block, you're creating a new game scene, setting the size, and setting the scale mode, and then here's the cool thing. On line 66, you're setting a transition, and that transition in this case is flip horizontal with duration. Once you created that transition, you're then presenting the scene, you're passing in the scene, and which transition you want to use. And then of course on line 69, we're running all of these actions. So now that we have our game over scene.swift file looked through and figured out, let's put it to use. Head over to the game scene.swift file and we'll begin adding some more code. The first bit of code that we need to add are some variables to hold information as to the number of lives our zombie has and whether or not the game is over. We'll add those to the top of the class on line 27. Now that we have our variables in place, let's scroll down to the update method and use those variables. We'll check to see if the number of lives is less than or equal to zero and whether or not the game is in progress. If it's in progress, we'll set it to game over equals true. We'll print out a message in the console and then we'll create our game over scene, pass in the variable and create another transition to present that scene. So let's scroll down. Here we are at our update method, and we'll put this check down here at the bottom. And I'll scroll up a little bit just so you can see. So 
So here you can see we're doing exactly what we discussed. We're checking the number of lives. We're setting the game over value. If it's less than zero, less than or equal to zero, that is. We're printing out a message to the console just for our benefit. Then we're creating a new game over scene. We're passing in the one value of false. We're setting the scale mode. And then here's the fun part. We're setting a transition. And again, we're using the flip horizontal with duration. And finally, on line 303, we're presenting the scene. But right now we've got no way for our zombie to lose lives. Let's make it so when our zombie hits an enemy, he loses one of his lives. Scroll up to where we've got our function where the zombie hits the enemy. And right after we make the sound, let's have him lose a life. We also want some type of visual indicator for our player so that they realize that the zombie just ran into an enemy. So as you can see here, we're creating a custom action that will allow us to blink the zombie so that there's some sort of visual indication that the zombie just ran into an enemy. Let's build and run and make sure everything's working. So you could see, let me hit stop real quick, that every time the zombie ran into an enemy, a life was taken away. Once there were no more lives, it transitioned by doing that flip to the game over scene. And then after a short period of time, it flipped back to the game scene. And remember, that's because in our game over scene, down here at the bottom, we told it to do exactly that. And you can see that here in this code. So now we've got what we need in order to lose the game. Let's add the code we need in order to win the game. And in this case, in order to win the game, the zombie has to collect five cats. We'll head back over to the game scene.swift file and we'll modify our move train function to help us count the number of cats and then to deal with that once we reach a certain number. So here we are at our move train function. Let's add a variable for our train count. So now that we have our train count in place, we need to increment that for every cat that's part of our conga line. We'll do that right within the enumerate child nodes with name. Here, we're just increasing our train count by one. Now let's head down to the bottom of our move train function and say, hey, you know what? Every time our train count is greater than or equal to five and the game is still going, let's switch them over to the game over scene and let them know that they won. So as you can see, this is very similar to what we did before with the number of lives. This time we're looking at our number of train count, and if that train count is greater than or equal to five, we win the game. We create a new game over scene, which we're doing on line 236. We are then setting a SK transition, the flip horizontal with duration on line 239. Then we are using that transition to present our scene, and you see that here on line 240. Let's build and run and make sure that our winning scene is working. I'm going to try not to lose here because I'm not very good at this game. Yeah. 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 Woohoo! I did it! Yay! Okay, enough of that. So now we can see that if we collect five cats, we win. If we hit the enemy more than a few times, we lose. Let's add a little more challenge by every time we hit an enemy, in addition to losing a life, we also lose one of our cats. We'll put that right down here before the start zombie animation. We'll call this function lose cats.
So this is a pretty big function. I'm actually not going to go through this line by line. Essentially what's going on here is every time the zombie and the enemy collide, you lose a cat. Now, of course, we have to call this function and we'll do that in the zombie and enemy collide function. That's up here a little ways. The name of the function is zombie hit enemy. And what we can do is right after he loses a life, we can also make him lose a cat. I know we're so mean, right? Now, before we build and run, there's one more thing I'd like to do. Right now, it's kind of cool that we've got the music playing when we win and the music playing when we lose, but we don't have any music playing during the actual game itself. Let's add that now. Head over to myutils.swift, and at the bottom of the file, I want you to add the following code. And in fact, I'm going to give us a little room here so we've got nice room to work with. First, we'll import the AV foundation. Then we'll create a variable to hold our background music player. Finally, we'll create a function to let us play our background music and we'll pass in the name of the music that we want to play. So using that file name that we passed in, we need to create our resource. So you could see here that whatever file name is passed in, we create a resource for that. If the resource doesn't exist, we simply return out of the function. If it does, however, we want to play that resource. So here you could see that we're essentially just creating an AV audio player with the contents of our URL and we're passing it into the background music player variable. And we're then playing it. Well, we're not exactly playing it yet because we've not called this function from anywhere. We need to head over to our game scene.swift file to the did move to view function and add a call to the play background music function and pass in the appropriate file name. Let's do this as soon as we come into the did move to view function. Now there is one more thing we need to do. We're playing music on our game over scene, so we need to stop our background music before we switch to that scene. There are two places we're switching to the scene, one in the update and one in the move train. So we'll go down to the move train and we'll handle that one first. We'll put it right after the print statement. So here you can see we're calling the background music player and we're essentially just telling it to stop playing. Like I said, we're doing this in two places, so we'll need to scroll down to the update method and also tell it to stop there before we switch to the new scene. Once again, we'll put it right under our print statement. And now we are ready to build and run. Isn't that music fantastic? I could sit here all day and play that. So as you can see, when the scene started, the music played. Just before it transitioned to the new scene, it stopped playing. And then when it came back, it played again. So that is how you handle scene transitions, and that is how you can add background music to your games. That's it for this video tutorial, and now we have a challenge waiting for you. Your challenge is to create a main menu scene. I hope you enjoyed watching this video tutorial. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.